Making good flat field images is very important in deep sky astrophotography. Flats do not only remove vignetting or dust donuts, they also reveal weakest details in our pictures. For making proper flat fields, we develop the Lazata flat field box, which creates color neutral and very even lit flat fields. It is also free from flickering, so you can create flats with short exposure times. The brightness of the box is higher than the brightness of usual electroluminescence foils, which is superior when working with narrowband filters. Instead, if you image with a DSLR or DSLM, you can and must use very short exposure times to get proper flats. But if you use very fast exposure times in the range of 1000 of a second and shorter, the mechanical shutter of such cameras can harm your flat field images. Also with CCD cameras where the exposure is started and ended only by a relatively slow mechanical shutter, this can be an issue. Here are some examples. This is a flat shoot with a Canon 6D at a shutter speed of 1 4000th of a second. You clearly see a gradient from top to bottom. And here the shutter completely covers more than 50% of the whole frame. To solve this problem, we develop the Lazata Flatbox Controller or FBC in short. The FBC synchronizes the camera and the flatbox while creating flats. The flatbox flashes only when the shutter of the camera is fully opened and turns off before the shutter starts to close. There are different ways to use the FBC device, either standalone with a cable shutter control or the engine, or you can use a little application when using it with the PC and DSLRs. And lastly, users of CCD or CMOS cameras can use it with the software Astrophotography tool. For the future, it is planned to integrate it in other softwares as well. Let's have a look how it works in standalone mode. First of all, we need to redirect the power supply through the converter. To do so, simply switch the power cable from your flat field box into the converter. On the right side, there is a standard RCA socket, where you can connect the appropriate cable that comes with the FBC. The other end goes back to your flat box. Take your camera, release cable or your engine and stick it into the dedicated socket on the left side of the controller. This is a standard Canon 3.5mm jack. If you don't have such, try to get a cable release unit with interchangeable jacks. This one here is a cheap model. On the right side there is the output that goes into your camera. If you already use an Amgen, you already do have the appropriate cable. Otherwise, add a little note to your order and we will send you the right cable. Needless to say that you now connect the other end to your camera as you would do with your cable release. Now it needs a little experimentation to find the perfect settings. Choose a relatively long exposure on your camera in manual mode, let's say one second, and dial in the ISO value you want to shoot your flats with. On the controller, you need to set a delay. Let's set it to 150 milliseconds. That means the controller flashes the flat box 150 milliseconds after the shutter gets opened. The duration of the flash can be controlled by the middle controller and the brightness is set by the right controller. As I use a fairly high ISO value on my camera and my telescope is pretty fast, I need it to set all those dials to relatively small values. When I now push the button of my cable release, the box flashes with a short delay after the clicking sound of the shutter. A little pro tip, if the shutter does not release, shortly disconnect the power supply and try again. Sometimes the circuits hiccup. Here are my values that I have chosen. As I mentioned before, you need to fiddle around a bit with the dials to find the perfect values for your setup. 
But once you found them, you can happily take one flat after another, all perfectly lit like from the textbook. The second option is to use the controller via a little app on your PC. For this purpose, remove the cable release and connect the controller via a standard USB cable to your PC. Before doing this, you should install the FTDI driver that's shown in another video we did about the engine. In addition, you need to install the application, which you can find on our website or in the video description. Last but not least, you need to set all dials at the controller to its zero value to tell the FBC that from now on the USB connection is active. Start the program and connect the COM port through the drop-down menu. Push connect and the application connects to the FBC. Set your camera to bulb and choose the appropriate exposure time, in that case 1000 millisecond or 1 second. For the delay, brightness and flash you can choose the same values you figured out before or just experiment a bit to find the perfect values. You also are highly recommended to set a pause value. This is necessary because the camera needs time to store the images on its SD card and the whole process goes so fast that the whole circle can spin over. So I choose 2 seconds, that sounds pretty much, but it really helps to get solid results. Choose one under flat number and just give it a try. If everything looks fine for you, you can now increase the number of flats and dial in the number that you are aiming for. Hit start and listen to the rhythmic sound of incoming flat fields. You can neither have a coffee nor a cigarette, because in less than one minute you get all your flats perfectly lit. The third method to use the FBC is via astrophotography tool, short APT. Unfortunately that does not work with DSLRs, only with CCD or CMOS cameras. Close the FBC app first. Then choose extra devices in APT and there you choose the Lazerta FBC. In this case, I have connected a ZWO RZ1600 to APT, the cooling is set to minus 20 degrees and already running, a filter wheel is connected as well. Choose tools and extra devices. The FBC is already connected to COM port 4. I do a refresh and you can see in the bottom lock menu that the FBC is connected to APT. Next go to Tools and choose CCD Flats 8, which helps us to find the perfect exposure times for our flat field images. You can create whole batches and for instance create flats automatically for all 7 filters in a filter wheel. But for the sake of this tutorial I only choose filter 1 and 2. The target ADU value is set to 40,000, which is roughly more than 50% of an illumination. You can set a deviation of 10% of accuracy. The Flat A2 now communicates via the FBC with the Lacerta flat box. In fact, the box is now sitting on the telescope tube and connected to the FBC, a camera and filter wheel is connected, like in a real situation. Under Create Flat Plans, we can now choose the number of flats we want APT to shoot. But first, APT needs to determine the appropriate exposure level. When this is done, APT writes a plan into the sequencer, which then can be fired to get our flats. But first things first. Hit Run and in our case, the luminance filter is chosen first and APT starts immediately to shoot flats. Our first flat is overexposed, you can see by the histogram and the ADU values. A target ADU value of 65000 is far too much. The next flat arrives and the exposure time was dialed down to 0.2 seconds. Do not use too short exposure times, especially with CMOS cameras, otherwise it can lead to overcorrected images. 
choose exposure times in the range of 1 second to 1 tenth of a second. After a short while, APT has finished the process of finding the right exposure times and a notification shows up on the screen saying that we are going to override our old flat plan with a new one. I say yes. Switch back to the camera tab, you can see that our plan is now written to the schedule and we now can run this plan to create our flats. Hit start and APT creates 25 flat frames for each chosen filter with the correct exposure times. This is all very fast and totally automated, so you can very convenient lean back and make flats very, very easy for all filter positions. You don't need to twist the flat box, you don't need to fiddle around with diffuser material like white paper or ND foil. Set image preview back to on and fit. We can inspect the fruits of our work and we see the typical appearance of flat frames with the corners darkened and a brighter center. When 24 frames are done for one filter, APT turns automatically to the red filter and starts over again. I hope you liked that video and you found it helpful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.